The biggest project in this course is the research project. And that's a pretty vague title, mainly because you have a lot of power and a lot of control as to what this research project is. If you've taken other biology courses, chemistry or other STEM courses, you've probably had to do some sort of research. Maybe it was around a central theme. Maybe it was something that you did in the lab room. And you're going to use a lot of those principles with this research project. But this research project is a lot bigger in the sense that I am, I guess, using this project as a way to train you about how scientists really do research. And by that, what I mean is you're developing your own questions about the world around you. And you're also going to prepare a manuscript as if you're submitting this to a scientific journal. There's no lab report guidelines or whatnot. Well, there are some, such as what fonts to use. But you're going to be writing as if you're submitting to the world of science. Don't worry, you'll get a lot of support along the way. But this is a pretty big project, uh, and it's a good chunk of your grade as well. So this video is being used over a couple different semesters, so you might notice that some dates or some things look a little bit different, and that it could very well be. Be sure to look through the instructions on your own time and read through them carefully just to make sure that you know all the expectations. But semester to semester, it should more or less be the same. So I'm going to start here in our Blackboard course and go to the Projects folder. And in the Project folder, we have the Research Project. Now within this research project, the very first thing is the item that has the instructions in the video, which you've already found, as well as an overview of the deadlines. Now this may look kind of overwhelming, the number of deadlines there are. However, about five of the things listed on here are optional uh, or are extra credit. And a lot of these are just more of reminders like, hey, in lab today, we're doing stuff related to the project. So these are not all assignments, so don't get too overwhelmed by it. If you scroll down, these are the individual assignments due for the project. They are in order of when things are turned in. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the instructions, and I'm just going to briefly go through it. I'm going to focus on the first part of the project in depth, but really the rest of it we're going to touch on a lot more in lab and with the subsequent assignments. So here's that same exact table. The very first thing that you'll be doing is after reading the instructions and watching this video, you're going to complete the short little quiz that's on Blackboard just to make sure that you kind of got the big points out of the project. And the very first thing to do in any research is really making observations about the world around you. So I'm gonna talk a lot about this particular assignment because it's the first one, and it's also the one that's gonna guide you through the rest of this project. So although you have a lot of freedom over your project, it does need to be somewhat related to the environment or ecology. You can't be like, ah, the question I want to answer is, are males taller than females? While yes, you could do this entire project focused on that, that's not related to this class. And so what I want you to do is actually get out and get, I guess, thinking about what's going on in the world. So I'm going to kind of read through this because I don't want to miss anything. So I do apologize if you're like, I can read this because I want to stop and explain things along the way. So each student Although this will be a group project, groups are not part of this yet. This very first thing is about you and your observations. So each student needs to make three 15 minute nature observations. And what I mean by that, well, is very vague and general on purpose, because what I want you to do is go outside. I want you to take a closer look at plants. Are plants larger at the front of your house versus the back of your house in sunny areas or shady areas? Do the bugs that you're seeing, are they found on top of leaves or bottom of leaves? The squirrels that are in your neighborhood, do you find them more on uh, natural structures or artificial structures? Anything related to the environment. Don't be like, ah, oh, there are five green cars today. Things related to being outside. It can be about plants. It can be about animals. You can flip over rocks. It can be in your neighborhood. It can be at a park. You have complete control and flexibility. What I want you to do is just almost get in the habit of noticing the world around you. Just what do you notice? The very last page has a potential type of worksheet you can use for these observations. I'll go through that last though. So for 15 minutes, I want you to just walk around, flip things over, get real close to things, take pictures of what's going on around you. Again, these observations can kind of be anywhere. If you have a backyard, you can start there. 
depending on how much stuff's going on in your backyard. If there's a park nearby, uh, can't if you're like, I really have no idea where I can go, the Germantown campus has a forest next to campus. There's a lot of greenery on the campus itself, lots of birds there. So where you go is completely up to you. I do recommend that you do have to do three observations. I recommend that you do each observation in a different location, as well as a different time of day. It is a recommendation. You will not lose points if you don't follow that. But the reason I recommend this is that you might notice very different things in your backyard versus going a five minute walk to somewhere else in your neighborhood versus if it's happening in the morning versus what's happening in the evening. And the more questions and the more observations you can make, the more likely you're going to come up with a really cool project. Again, we'll talk about the last sheet and a and how you can record these observations. But part of these observations is thinking about what you could do as a research project. Now, a couple of weeks after the observations, we will be having a lab where I'm going to be pairing you with students who had either similar observations or similar ideas as you. But the more observations and the more ideas you have, the greater likelihood you're going to find your peers that have similar questions. And if you have similar questions, it makes the project a lot easier. But if you're kind of half-assing it and not putting a lot of effort into it, you're going to find it to be a lot harder to get started. Now, after you make your observations, your next goal is to develop research questions based on those observations. For this project, there's going to be a group of three or four of you. You're each going to have uh, like a whole series of research questions, and from there you guys will determine one or two to study. But the more you can start with, the easier it is. So the research questions you're going to be developing need to be a comparison between groups. The reason for this is the statistical test that we're going to use in the class. I want us to all use the same statistical test. Don't worry about that right now. I kind of have a template for you here. So who is taller? males or females. So in this case, I'm comparing height of males with heights of females. Which birds sing louder? House sparrows or bluebirds? So are house sparrows, I'm measuring the loudness of house sparrows and the loudness of bluebirds. And so when you write your research questions, they don't need to be in some beautiful format or anything, but to make sure that you're writing questions in this comparison format, I recommend doing this. Ask the question, who is taller? Who is found more in the shade, who needs more water, blank or blank. It's not gonna be how it is in your research paper, but don't worry about that. This is just gonna help you. Now, when it comes to your observations, write as many things that you notice in those 15 minutes. Then at the end, like you don't have to do this while you're out and about, come up with at least five different research questions based on your observations. The more you have, the better it is for you. But I'm requiring for the points for this assignment to have at least five. Da, 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 just reading through this. Keep in mind that for the research lab report, you will need to describe how the answer to your question can better science, the environment, humans, whatnot. So when you're thinking of these research questions, if you're like, what? Oh, goodness. Sorry. What color are, this is a horrible question. What color are flowers on the east versus the west? Think about, okay, can I write a whole research paper about this? Is this going to have some way this applies to humans or the environment? You don't need to figure that out, but just keep that in the back of your mind. The other thing that you need to develop as well I'm not sure if I have it in here. It is written somewhere is that take pictures while you're out and about and also include at least three different pictures uh, in each of the observations. This is just showing me like, or this is helping me visualize like where you were and what you were drawing inspiration from. And it's also just as scientists, like it's a good thing to get into the habit of doing is just taking pictures, essentially gathering evidence. So it just helps. Um, so include some pictures with each observation as well. Once you submit all of your observations with your questions and your pictures, oh, here's the pictures. Once you do that, then 
You're going to submit it in Blackboard. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you feedback and be like, oh, questions number two and four are really good. When we do this lab activity where I pair you with guys, you should definitely share these two questions with the group. So it gives you guys almost like pre-approved style questions to kind of help you along with the next activity. So that's all I'll say about the observations. I am going to scroll to the last page. This is a potential research project observation sheet. Feel free to make something similar. If you want to write things in a notebook, that's totally fine. But some things you should write are the date, um, your time period, where were you, um, things noting about the environment. So this would be like, oh, it's really cloudy or it's raining or it rained about an hour ago. Things that might help to explain some of the things you're noticing. Your observations. So what are you noticing in general? There is no format to these observations. If you're like, wow, I saw no squirrels. That's an observation. Totally write it. This is also where you can include your pictures. And then finally, interesting questions to test. This is where you're going to put your minimum of five research questions. Again, in that comparing format. Use this if you want to. This at least outlines all the information that you need for an observation. Just to briefly talk about everything else. So we will be in lab together for you guys to form your groups and then to agree on the research questions you guys will study and to also work together to develop your methods. As an optional assignment, your group can submit a rough draft of the introduction and methods section of your paper. If you submit your rough draft, you are eligible to do peer edits of another group's paper, and doing peer edits does give you extra credit. On your own time, you and your group will need to collect that data related to that research question. Once the data is collected, I give you, I think, two and a half to three weeks to collect y'all's data on your own time. We're going to have another lab completely dedicated to data analysis. At this point in the course, you'll actually have already learned how to process your data, but if you guys are running into issues or whatnot, I'll be in the lab. Uh, well, yeah, I will be in the lab and you guys are working in your groups and I'll help you where you need it. After our data analysis lab, you and your group can turn in a rough draft of the entire lab report. And again, if you do that, you are eligible to do peer editing, which is worth extra credit. This section here for the final lab report gives you all the instructions of what is needed. It has information on formatting, what you should include in your introduction, methods, results, and discussion, how you should format your references, as well as the rubric. And you should, should refer to this often to make sure that you're including everything you need to. Finally, we will be doing a presentation. We're going to do it as a poster session. This is more or less making one PowerPoint slide that has all the information on it. This information in the instructions tells you how to make it, what needs to be included, but more or less, it's your paper in a condensed form. So don't really worry about it now. The focus is on the lab report. And once you finish your lab report and get feedback from me, the poster is actually pretty easy to make. And then finally, we will be doing a peer review. How many points it's worth is actually going to be up to uh, each group member or really each group. One of the early labs that we will be doing together, you guys will be choosing how you wish to be graded amongst your peers. So it's going to be completely up to you guys, and we'll talk about that more when we get there. So that's pretty much it. I really focused again on the observations. Everything else we're going to learn more during uh, the progression of this project.